Good afternoon all. Um, I'm very excited because this has just been delivered by my postman. It's the uh, TS100 soldering iron kit and uh, this is actually the nine tip set so I should have all of these tips. So this set has been very kindly supplied by Banggood.com so thanks very much to Banggood. Uh, so without further ado let's unbox. There's a bit of tape there. Let's have a look inside. Um, okay, it's all wrapped up in bubble wrap. Oh my goodness, there's a very nice um, sort of metal case with a little clip on there. And this, I guess that's instructions, but let's open this box up. Uh, right, here we go. And that's the set. Um, there's an Allen key with a couple of Allen screws. Uh, those are seven of the tips. Two more up here which have this little sort of um, what looks like an exhaust pipe thing. So something to do with heat I would guess. The soldering iron. Um, a cable which is XT60 so that you can plug this into a LiPo. And a couple of little tiny sponges. Right, the soldering iron itself is really, really tiny, very, very light as well. Now it's going to get heavier, of course, when I put one of these uh, tips on it. Now the important thing about this soldering iron is that the tips are fully integrated. You can see that there are um, essentially three connections. So they're fully integrated heaters, temperature sensors, um, all in one unit. So there's no um, sort of thermal disconnect between the actual iron tip and the element, the heating element and the temperature sensor. Uh, well let's start by peeling that off the display on this thing. There's also a couple of other uh, peel off bits of um, plastic on these two logos but I don't think they're terribly important. Um, now faced with all these nine bits I'm not entirely sure where to start but um, something is for sure and that is that these two have this additional sort of a uh, heat piece on. Now it does unscrew, I've noticed, there's quite a nice fine thread on there and you can take it off but it doesn't seem to be interchangeable with um, these tips because they don't have the thread on this wide section here. So um, these are different in some way and I don't quite know why. I think perhaps I'm going to have to read the manual. However, what I think I might do is pick one of the very large uh, tips because I've got a particular job I want to try this soldering iron on because I really struggled with it the other day and it'd be a very interesting test to see if this can do it. So I think I'm going to use um, this tip. It's got a very large diameter sort of wedge shaped, I don't know, 45 degree cut tip. Clearly it's designed for very large item soldering iron. Let's take a look at the model number of that. Um, so this one is the TSC4. Uh, Let's take a quick look at the manual and some of the other tips. Yeah so here's the page on choosing soldering iron tips. It just says note choosing the right tips will help you work more efficiently. <laughs> doesn't actually really say a lot doesn't it? But um, yeah I quite like the look of this one TSC4. It's got that massive large diameter tip. Um, yes it is 45 degrees. 11 millimeters from well there to there. Right so let's use this allen key to undo um, the top allen key. There's also another one in the bottom so it appears you have to undo both. Uh, let's put that in. Yeah we've got some spring-loaded contacts in, in there by the feel of things. So I'll push that fully home and tighten these two allen screws. I'm not going to tighten them too crazy just nip them up. Yeah, I think that's about it. As long as that doesn't pull out, that should be fine. And now I can apply a power to there. Um, oh, now is that a 2.5 or a 2.1? So this is the plug from my solar power system, which is 2.1, and it won't actually go in there. So this has a 2.5 millimeter diameter pin. Now, have I got some sort of adapter? Uh, yes, I have. I've got um, a female to female coupler there. That's a 2.1. That's a 2.5. That should go into the iron. Let's plug it in. 
and it boots up and says version 2.18 and it says press that bottom button which is button A. Um, so without doing that, is that hot? No. So it doesn't warm up, it appears, until you press that button. Let's actually press it now. 25. Oh, there it goes. That's fast. And what temperature is that going to settle at? It seems a bit all over the place at the moment. I can't quite work out what that's aiming for. Right, that's settled down now at about 200 and... 70 degrees. So I'm not quite sure what all, what all that business was about initially. Oh, it's 300 degrees. Yeah, that's smelling and I can smell that now and that does seem rather hot. So are these the up and down temperature buttons? Doesn't look like it. Read the manual time. Ah, maybe not read the manual. Press and hold this bottom button. Um, press and hold and it's now saying down or oh, it's going down in 10 degree increments. So let's start it what temperature does solder melt at? About 180. So let's do it at about 220 and see how we go. And we've got a quite interesting graphic on the side here. You can see it's showing a tip and those sort of squiggly lines I think kind of mean steady as she goes. If I press and hold and take the temperature down and then watch what that graphic does, it says going down in temperature. And of course that's just ambient cooling it reaches the temperature and then sort of steady as she goes again. Let's press and hold this one and go up to say 240 and see what the graphic does. And now we've got up arrows, so it's taking it up in temperature. And of course it's doing that with uh, energy from my batteries. And again, steady as she goes. And it doesn't seem to be I don't know whether you can see when it's cutting in and when it's cutting out. I can kind of see it on my voltage monitor. Right, the next thing is, will it melt solder? Um, presumably it will at 240 degrees. So let's just touch some solder on the end there. And yeah, that's melting nicely. And by keeping it at this reasonably low temperature, I'm not going to um, oxidize the tip too much. So now let's see if it'll solder this tricky thing that I was trying to solder the other day. Now I was going to go and get my um, other soldering iron stand, but this one is actually really nice. Um, this base is not plastic, it's ceramic. It's very heavy. Well, unless it's... No, I don't think it is. I think it's a ceramic base. There's a little uh, metal thing here, which I presume is where you uh, lean the tip on, maybe like that. And you've got a couple of sponges here, which they're very tiny, but they fit in there. This has got a nice cork insert there so that's rather nice um does that stop it pulling off the desk yes because that actually has an indent so it doesn't go further than that so that kind of works quite well now i'm kind of aware that this thing's sitting here at 240 degrees for no good reason so i was wondering whether it shut itself down and it does say uh, when leaving it for more than 180 seconds three minutes it will trigger sleep mode and the temperature will automatically adjust to preset sleep temperature. So maybe I want to, because uh, it does warm up extremely quickly, maybe I want to shorten that three minutes to, mm, well, less than one minute really. Um, now I've got to start adjusting these parameters in order to do that. Uh, the other way, of course, I can do it is to pull the power and then put the power back on and it should enter um, sleep mode so but more manual reading required I think right it seems that if you press both buttons and hold that puts it back into uh, sleep mode so that's handy to know and you can get your finger across both buttons simultaneously um, one thing it doesn't seem to do is if you pull the power and power it back on and start it up on with button A it seems to forget that I've set it for 240 degrees and it seems to take it all the way up to 300 degrees, which is what the default um, is set to when you first receive this thing. So I think there's a, a method for changing that default, but it doesn't seem to remember that I nudged it down a bit. So it hasn't stored anything in non-volatile memory, for example. 
And I'm not entirely sure about this yet, but it seems that if I want to change some of these default parameters, um, like the work temperature, I need to plug um, a USB cable into this. And there is actually a USB micro B socket just next to the power socket. Um, go into uh, a file called config.txt and edit one of those parameters to change that default temperature. So just briefly here, because for some reason the audio didn't record, I'm changing the work temperature from 300 degrees to 250 degrees. Uh, now I'm changing the standby temperature from 200 degrees to 150 degrees. So yes, you just edit these parameters, sleep time 180, changing that to 60, and then you save the file back to the sort of virtual SD card on the soldering iron, and you're done. And you can see that with the USB connector in there, it just says config. That should have done it. I won't do a proper eject. Uh, where's my power cable? Here it is. Let's plug that in. It should go into standby. Press that button. And now it should ramp up to uh, 250 degrees instead of 300. And it doesn't seem to be going wild and crazy now. It seems to have settled down. So I'm not quite sure what that was. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking for 250 degrees and then I can nudge that back manually to what I want, which was 240. Not sure if that's going to be warm enough yet. Uh, well, there it goes. So I've changed the default uh, switch on temperature from 300 to 250 by editing that config file. Right, a couple of other housekeeping things before I start soldering. Let's just put a little bit of water Oh, that's way too much. Oh, that's uh, that sponge has grown about tenfold in size. That's enormous. Um, yeah, that actually looks okay. Um, I'll just put that into press both buttons into sleep so it cools down. No point, it's sitting there hot for no reason. So this is what I wanted to have a go at. It's um, this link wire that runs between these two uh, fork terminals between these two supercapacitors, and I wanted to solder it in place and I didn't bother to attempt it on my 18 watt um, Antex iron so I used the um, uh, temperature controlled soldering iron the one with the big base station the blue one and just about managed to get it to um, adhere or to melt but it wasn't very satisfactory it didn't really want to do it question is can this thing do it so let's um, switch the iron on and up it warms. Oh, the solder's gone a bit nasty on the top there. That's not going to melt yet, is it? What temperature is it up to? Not far away, so that should start melting now. Yep, yeah, that's melting. Okay, and let's apply it to here. I'll bring the camera down a bit, get as close as I can, but I'm working kind of upside down. Is it going to be able to melt the solder on these super cap connections with this monster great tip and uh, yeah i'm really struggling with this um, i've taken this up to 400 now which is flat out and it just is having a problem oh no wait a minute that's actually doing it now i've got to be quick because i'm aware that these capacitors are getting these capacitor terminals are getting very hot but yeah that's actually melting the solder it's not flowing it quite and you can see that the temperature of the iron has been pulled right down. One thing I did think which might just help it a little bit is if I undo one of these bolts so there's much less thermal connection between um, that fork and that bolt. The only problem is that fork is now free to wander about. Oh yes that's melting very easily. Yes I mean that's that's melted incredibly simply. Um, that's done one side so if I tighten that one up and then undo the other side I can probably get the other side done as well. Yep yeah, that's working fine that has completely melted. The uh, fork terminal was wobbling about while it was melted this did drop in temperature but I've made my solder joint so it can do it but you do have to help it along a little bit. Let's uh, turn that off or we'll put it in standby. And if you want to see what I've actually done, um, that's it sort of reflowed. Let's have a 
little closer look through the magnifying glass. It doesn't look quite as pretty from the other side. Uh, now, if you're shouting at the screen saying, yes, well, on 13.5 volts, actually, it's only 13 volts at the moment because it's not sunny today. Um, you're only going to be giving it mm, probably around 20 watts. Then, yes, indeed, this is only behaving as a 20 watt iron. If I gave it 16 volts, it can deliver 30 watts to the tip. And from a 19 volt sort of laptop power supply, this iron can behave as a 40 watt iron. You can't even go higher than that. So, yes, I've not given it the best chance. <laughs> of melting the solder on that particular uh, capacitor. So given that this actually could be a lot more powerful um, than I'm enabling it to be by my relatively low voltage, I have to say I'm really impressed with this iron. It's really tiny, so it takes up very little space on my desk. It can be sort of unplugged and packed away really easily. I'm loving this little base. It's really heavy because it's um, all ceramic. Now, I was just going to say that one tiny little improvement could have been a little flat across there so that when you sit it up, it doesn't fall to one side. But actually, having said that, once you plug in the power cable, of course, the rigidity of the power cable keeps it angled towards you. And then, of course, you can see the display at all times. Now, I've just come onto eBay to check the price of the soldering iron tips. And it seems that you can get them for around $10 each with free shipping. Um, the two that have that screw on sort of thing with holes in it, I can't quite uh, describe it. Um, it's, something, it's something to do with hot silver and they've put these little rings around the tips. So maybe the tips are coated differently, but the manual says nothing about this. Um, they're a little bit more expensive. They're about uh, $14 each. Uh, yeah, so while I was looking at eBay, this thing has gone into standby, so that should be, yeah, that's cooled down now. So I can take that tip uh, out, and because uh, this is a ridiculously big one, and put in something a bit more appropriate for some uh, surface mount work. So I think I'll go for this one. It's got a nice fine tip. Uh, this one is called a TSI, so let's uh, tighten that one up on both sides don't want to over tighten it these look like quite small screws quite a small allen key also you've got to keep this allen key uh, to hand because uh, well you need it to change tips so let's just uh, warm that up and uh, start working on now uh, when i did this eight pin chip i tacked that corner pin on soldered the other seven but didn't resolder that one so i'm just going to resolder that now and i'll get in as close as i can Right, let's give this a try. A little bit of solder on there. And just remake that joint. Yes, that's nice. Now I've gone back up to 300 degrees actually. I found that uh, when I was just uh, putting this on the sponge, it was tending to take all the heat out of that very fine tip. So I think a little more energy in the tip is probably a good thing. Perhaps 300 as a default was the right temperature after all. Maybe the uh, manufacturers of this iron know best. But I'm starting to think I'm going to quite like this iron powered from my uh, solar power system. That doesn't give you the maximum uh, energy into the iron, into or power I should say, in terms of watts. But it's what I'm used to. I mean my 18 watt Antex, this is going to be uh, delivering about the same amount of power to the tip as that. But it's low voltage. What could be better? Uh, so yes, big thanks uh, once again to Banggood for sending me this TS100 soldering iron and uh, all the tips. I think I'm gonna like this thing. Cheerio.